What's up everyone? Welcome to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel. Today is going to be my Google Display Ads tutorial for 2022. So I'm going to be creating a campaign through Google Ads that runs across the Google Display Network. Now if you're not familiar with the Google Display Network, it's made up of over 35 million websites and apps and probably some of the different websites and apps that you use on a daily basis. So we're going to create a new campaign here and I'm going to be doing the same thing I did with my discovery campaign a couple days ago where I have a sale on my website for 10% off furniture. So throughout the entire month of April, people can use a specific code at my website and that will give them a discount off of some of the furniture on my website as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to come here to Google ads and we're going to create a new campaign. So first things first, you want to choose a campaign objective. And if you're using conversion tracking, which if you are running Google ads, you should be using conversion tracking for your main key performance indicator so that you can optimize your campaigns for more conversions and ultimately more revenue for your business. So what you want to do is use the sales or leads objective to get the best possible results out of Google Display Ads campaigns. You can also use website traffic, product and brand consideration, brand awareness and reach, but in my opinion, I would rather use sales or leads so that I'm actually driving measurable results for my business rather than just driving clicks where people are, might visit my website and leave within a couple seconds or just generating impressions on my advertisements. I want people to click on my advertisement and actually go through my website and hopefully convert. So in my case, my campaign objective here is going to be sales, and then it's going to say use these conversion goals to improve sales. So here's where you want to choose the conversion goals you want to optimize for. In this case, I'm just optimizing for my purchases conversion goal. So I'm going to remove these other two conversion goals down here. Okay, so my main conversion goal on my website is purchases. And what I actually track on my website are affiliate clicks. So every time someone clicks through an affiliate link, that counts as a conversion on my website. So we have our conversion goal here, purchases. So we're ready to click on continue. Now, once we click on continue, we need to select a campaign type. So I'm running a search campaign right now, a performance max campaign right now, and a discovery campaign. So what we're going to do is we're going to run a display campaign. And then what you want to do is choose standard display campaign through your setup. And next you want to choose the web page people will go to after clicking your ad. So in this case, I'm going to come back over here. We're going to copy my landing page. I'm going to paste it in this field right here. And then we need to name our campaign. So I'm going to name my campaign now. Okay. And we'll do April, 2022 furniture sale, Google display ads. So we're ready to click on continue. Next, we're going to start with our location targeting and our language targeting. So you want to make sure you're choosing the locations where you serve your customers. So wherever your customers are located, so in my case, I'm going to choose United States and Canada. Now, the other thing here is when it has target, there's going to be presence or interest. So when you choose this option, which is the default option, it's people in regularly in or people who have shown interest in my targeted locations. In this case, I'm just going to target the presence where people who are actively in or regularly in my targeted locations. So that's I'm going to choose here for target exclude. I'm going to keep it as presence as well. And I'm choosing United States and Canada because that's where I ship products to. So we're going to keep scrolling down here and now we have languages. So you want to select the languages your customers speak. In this case, I'm just going to choose English for my language targeting and we're ready to click on more settings. Okay. We'll scroll down here. So ad rotation. So you can update your ad rotation. I just leave this as optimized, prefer the best performing ads. You can set ad schedule. So if you only want your ads to run during certain hours or on certain days, you can choose exactly when your advertisements are running. You can choose specific devices where you want your advertisements to show. So you can set specific targeting for devices. I usually just leave this wide open for devices. Now, one thing you could do is use dynamic ads through your, the Google display network. So what you can actually do is create personalized ads. So if people visit specific pages on your website, you can retarget them with your advertisements by using a dynamic ads feed that basically keeps track of every page that people are visiting when they visit your website. And then you can actually serve them advertisements for the pages that they visited. So if they look at specific products, you can show them advertisements for those products if they didn't convert. So that's one option here for dynamic ads. I'm not going to be doing this in this video, but it's something I could try to create a tutorial for in the future. So next we're going to click on more settings one more time. So, you can choose start and end dates here if you want to set specific dates for your campaign. And then last but not least for content exclusions, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll opt out of showing my ads if it's for mature audiences 
or if it's any sensitive content. So those are a couple different options you can choose. Now for content type over here, I'll also remove below the fold and park domains. So below the fold means that your ads are, might show at the very bottom of pages. So anytime someone is scrolling down your page, they're going below the fold. So I want my advertisements to show really in this top portion so that people can actually see my advertisements and so my advertisements don't get buried at the bottom of the page. Now, your ads might still show below the fold even if you exclude this content type, but it's more likely that your ads will show towards the top of the page if you exclude this. So this is usually what I choose, choose for content exclusions across the Google Display Network. So that's what we're gonna do for right now and we're gonna click on next. Okay, so you wanna set your average daily budget for this campaign and if you look over here on the right hand side, you'll see the most you'll pay per month is your daily budget times 30.4, the average number of days in a month. So if I wanna spend $1,000 this month for this campaign, then my daily budget here is gonna be $33 and I should spend somewhere between $990 and $1,010 basically. So you just wanna make sure you're setting a daily budget and then you can multiply it by 30.4 to get an idea of how much you're gonna spend over the course of a month. Okay, so we're gonna scroll down here and next is gonna be our bidding strategy. So since we chose sales as our objective, if you choose sales or leads, you wanna focus on conversions. Otherwise, you're gonna be focusing on clicks. Now, if you're focusing on conversions, that will obviously help you get the best possible results for your campaign. So I'm gonna to choose to focus on conversions. It's gonna say, how do you wanna get conversions? I'm gonna choose automatically maximize conversions and I'm gonna set a target cost per action and I'm gonna use their suggested target CPA of $3.10. So I'm gonna apply this target CPA and you can see it's gonna say pay for conversions. So we have a $33 daily budget. Our target CPA is $3.10. So we should drive about 10 conversions per day on average over the course of a month, as long as our target CPA is $3.10 or less. So ultimately our goal is to get our target CPA as low as possible, because that means we're driving more and more conversions within our budget. So this is gonna be my bidding strategy. Focus on conversions, automatically maximize conversions, set a target cost per action, and that's gonna make us use the target CPA bid strategy where we're trying to drive conversions for $3.10 or less. So we're ready to click on next. Okay, so next is gonna be targeting and you can see right now it says optimized targeting is set up for you. Help us get more conversions by using information such as our landing page and assets. So we'll be uploading our assets and creating all of our assets in the next step. But as far as our landing page, what Google Ads is gonna do is it's gonna look at basically all the keywords on our landing page and really read our page to understand what we're promoting. So if I'm sending traffic to my farmhouse furniture page, Google Ads is gonna know, okay, this website is selling furniture, so we wanna find them customers who are actively looking for furniture. So what you could do with your display campaign if you don't wanna add targeting, is set up optimized targeting and just click on next. Because what Google Ads is gonna do is basically read all of our assets and our landing page to try to, try to find customers. However, what I would recommend doing is adding targeting, and I would recommend using audience segments. So these three at the bottom, keywords, topics, and placements, is gonna allow us to suggest where we want our ads to show. So if we come in here to placements, you can actually suggest specific websites, YouTube channels, YouTube videos, apps, and app categories that we wanna target. So if we come in here and we just search a specific word, phrase, URL, or enter a video ID, it's gonna give us a bunch of different websites that we can target, YouTube channels that we can target, YouTube videos that we can target, and basically what we're doing is we're just suggesting websites. So this will not limit your ads at all if you're using optimized targeting, but if I just come in here and I just search, for example, we'll do home decor. So let's say people who are visiting websites and apps and using watching YouTube videos that are about home decor, we could target those placements specifically with our ad. Okay, so we have 281 websites here, over a thousand YouTube channels, over a thousand YouTube videos, and if you wanna choose placements, all you need to do is go through each one of these and click on some of these specific placements. So you just click on these placements, click on done, and you're basically suggesting different places where you want your ads to run. This will tell Google Ads the types of websites where you want to show your ads to people who are browsing those websites. So we can do all of these here and enter all these websites. Truthfully, I don't really target placements too often, so I'd rather just target audience segments and target specific people regardless of what content they're looking at currently. 
So I'm not gonna enter any placements here. If we come over to add targeting, we can do topics and keywords as well. So to go over topics really quick, you're basically saying, I want my ads to show on pages about specific topics. So what I could do here is just scroll down, choose home and garden, click on done, and we can leave that as our targeting. We're, again, you're only suggesting web pages, so your ads are still gonna show outside of these topics. So I can just do this targeted topic for home and garden that matches my farmhouse furniture campaign perfectly. So we'll just leave this as a targeted topic, and then we'll come down here and add targeting again. And if we start from the bottom one more time, so keywords, this is gonna be keyword contextual targeting. So suggest terms related to your products or services to target relevant websites. And if we scroll down, you're gonna see the keyword setting is gonna be content. Only show ads on web pages, apps, and videos related to these keywords. So if I come over here back to my page, if I entered keywords like farmhouse furniture, farmhouse living room furniture, farmhouse bedroom furniture, dining room furniture, if I enter all of those different keywords here, it would target pages like my farmhouse furniture page here or any blogs or any websites that are about furniture and pages that closely match those keywords. It's not gonna be people who are typing in specific keywords into Google. It's gonna be based on the actual pages and the content on those pages. I really never use targeted keywords anymore for when I'm targeting content. If anything, I'll choose a topic sometimes, but for the most part, I don't really target keywords. I don't really target placements. I focus mostly on the audience segments targeting here. Now, demographics is pretty straightforward. You could suggest people based on age, gender, gender, parental status, or household income. In this case, I'm not gonna change any of my demographic targeting. I'm just gonna leave it wide open. So basically, I trust Google Ads to find people who are gonna be more likely to convert rather than excluding people based on specific demographics. So let's come into audience segments and go over some of the different options there. So if we come into audience segments and we go to browse, so you have different options here from detailed demographics, you have affinity audiences, in-market and life events, your data and similar segments, combined segments, and custom segments. So detailed demographics, if we come in here, you can see Pretty straightforward, parental status, marital status, education, and home ownership status. So for example, I can come in here to home ownership status and just say, you know what, I just wanna target homeowners, but in this case, people who are homeowners, people who are renters, they both buy furniture, so there's really no reason to exclude one or the other. So you can choose detailed demographics here if you want to. I don't use those too often, honestly. Affinity audiences, these are interests and habits. They're very broad interests and habits. So if we come in here to food and dining, for example, coffee shop regulars. So even if you're selling coffee, it doesn't mean that there's somebody actively looking to purchase coffee. They might have their morning routine where they go to Starbucks or they go to Dunkin' Donuts, and that's where they go every day to get their coffee. So you can try it if you are, for example, opening your own coffee shop. This might be a decent audience to try to target in your local market but they're very broad interest groups and people aren't actively looking for any of the things in these affinity segments. So with banking and finance, avid investors, a lot of avid investors aren't looking for more products. They're just people who go into their whatever investing platform they use and they invest. So they're not always the best targeting when you're trying to drive conversions. They can be useful if you're really just focused on brand awareness but detailed demographics and affinity, I'm not gonna use for this campaign. So that brings us to in-market and life events. So in-market segments are people who are actively researching or planning. So if we come in here to autos and vehicles and we do motor vehicles, for example, someone in the motor vehicles new category is actively looking to purchase or lease a new motor vehicle. So Google ads can tell that based on search terms people are using, based on websites people are visiting, so people who are actively researching motor vehicles, Google ads will put into this category and then you can target them with your advertisements. So in my case, what I can do is just come over here to search. And first, when you come to search, they're gonna give you a bunch of different ideas that you can choose. You can see home furnishings. Those are people that are actively looking to purchase home furniture. So that's the in-market segment I can select. So that's the only in-market segment I'm gonna select for this campaign. And we're gonna come back over here to browse. Now you can see right now with my weekly estimates, based on my targeting and settings, but not my budget or bid, there's 2.2 billion weekly available impressions. 
That is more than enough impressions for my daily budget of $33. But what we can do is keep adding more targeting. So we have our in-market audience here. Next is gonna be your data and similar segments. So I have videos on my channel about Google Ads remarketing. So I'm not gonna go over that in this video specifically, but I do have some different website visitors audience set up. So I can incorporate these in my targeting and say, okay, anybody who's visited my page over the last 540 days or visited my website, I wanna target them as well. So that's another option I have here for targeting. Now, personally, I like to run separate Google Ads remarketing campaigns, and then I'll use some of their other targeting in another campaign. So I would rather not use remarketing in this campaign, and I would rather use something like home furnishings in market. And then what we can do is use similar segments. So when you create website visitor audiences, your similar segments are gonna be created automatically. So what I could do is just say similar segments similar to all users of farmhouse goals. And this is based on my Google Analytics 4 data. So basically anybody who's visited my website over the last 30 days, they're gonna find people who are very similar to them based on the types of websites they're visiting, based on their demographics. So a variety of factors and Google Ads will build us this audience automatically. And if we just scroll over, you can see the size 25,000 to 66,000 people. So it's a pretty narrow audience of people that are gonna be similar to the people who are visiting our website. So we're gonna use these two targeting for right now. Next is combined segments and custom segments. So I like using custom segments and you can create them very easily even as you're building your campaign. So if you go to create a custom segment, all you need to do is name it. You can either choose people with any of these interests or purchase intentions or choose people who searched for any of these terms on Google. Personally, I like to do people who search for any of these terms on Google and you can add Google search terms here. So in my case, if I come over to my page, you can use, I can use these exact keywords on my page like farmhouse furniture, farmhouse living room furniture, and I can use all of those search terms. And then people who are using those search terms are gonna be targeted with my advertisements. So what you wanna do here is use basically your keyword list for your website and you wanna enter those keywords here and then you can target that custom segment. Now I've already created this here. You can see farmhouse furniture, furniture search terms. And if we just look real quick, farmhouse style furniture stores near me, I have just farmhouse furniture, modern farmhouse furniture, farmhouse dressers, farmhouse sofas. So there's a bunch of different keywords in here. So if we click on this, we now have a custom segment added to our targeting as well. So if we incorporate one in-market segment, one similar segment and one custom segment, this is a very good targeting group and we're basically suggesting to Google Ads, these people in these audiences are gonna be the most likely to convert on our website based on the in-market audience they're in, based on them being similar to people who visit our website, and based on people who are actively searching for farmhouse furniture when they visit Google. So this is a good targeting group for right now. So what we're gonna do is we have optimized targeting on, we're gonna leave that on, Optimized targeting will find people beyond our targeting signals. So essentially we're suggesting to Google Ads to target people in these audience segments, but they can also go out and find other people who they think are gonna be likely to convert, even if they're not actively in these audience segments. So we're gonna come down here again and we're gonna click on next. Next is gonna be creating our responsive display ad. So Google Ads has made use creating Google display ads much easier with responsive display ads. So what we wanna do is definitely use responsive display ads if we're running Google Display Network campaigns. So you wanna start with your final URL. So we have our final URL here, our farmhouse furniture shop page. So we can come over here, enter our business name next, which is gonna be farmhouse goals. Next is gonna to be to add up to 15 images. So if we click to add images, first what you can see is our asset library. So any images we've uploaded, and I've already uploaded a bunch of images here, and what you can see is they're all very large images. So 1500 by 1500, and basically all of them have at least 1500 on one side. So if we come back over here to cancel, if we just come over here to images real quick, some of the guidelines, the recommended size for landscape images, which is 1.91 1 by one, is 1200 by 628. The recommended size for a square image, one by one, is 1200 by 1200. So you wanna make sure you're using very large images because they're gonna look much better in your advertisements. If you don't have good images to use, come over here and use some of the stock images that Google Ads allows you to use for free. 
So if I come over here and just do something like farmhouse furniture, let's see what some options they have. Okay, and some of these are very good images that I would use for my campaigns. Now they're not that large, some of these different images here. So I'm gonna come back over to my asset library and just use some of these images that are actual products on my website. So when we click on a selected image, you're gonna see selected two ratios. So there's two different ratios you can choose from when you're creating responsive display ads, the 1.9 one by one landscape images and then one by one square images. So I can choose either one or two ratios for every single image here. So I'm gonna choose two for this one because they both look like good images for advertisements. And that's gonna give us two out of our 15 selected assets. So I'm gonna keep coming through here and selecting more and more images. This one again gave us two different ratios that we can choose from. So we're gonna select two ratios for this image as well. So I'm gonna complete this process and just kind of try to select some of these different images here. This will look best as a square, so we'll just do the one ratio here. Okay, so we have 15 selected assets, so we can come over here and look at all of our different selected assets. So these will all look good in our advertisements, so we're ready to click on save. And now we have all of our images here. Next is gonna be logos. So again, if we just come over here, two different logos, a four by one landscape logo with a recommended size of 1200 by 300, and a one by one square logo with a recommended size of 1200 by 1200. So we're gonna come in here and select our different logos. Okay, so I have a total of three logos selected here, so you could use up to five. So one of these is a little bit smaller than the other. So one kind of is smaller here. If we come back to the other one, this one kind of fills out the entire logo. So a couple different logos and then just one square logo. So we'll click on save. And again, the reason you wanna use all of your images and logos is because Google Ads is gonna serve the top performing combinations. So you wanna use five logos if you have some different logos to use, and you definitely wanna use all 15 images. So we're gonna scroll down here. Next is gonna be videos. So if we click on plus videos, these are optional. So you can use videos directly from your YouTube channel. So what you wanna do is upload videos to your YouTube channel that you can use for your responsive display ads. If I come over here to recently used, I have some different farmhouse furniture videos I can select. So this one's 25 seconds, this one's 30 seconds, this one's 19 seconds. So we'll use these three videos here and click on save. There's no downside to using all the videos that you can. There's no downside to using all of these different assets. It's only gonna help your overall campaign performance. Now next is gonna be our ad copy. So we'll start with headlines here. We can add up to five headlines. Again, we wanna use all of our ad copy fields. We can use long headlines here. So you wanna make sure you're using your long headline. So that's 90 characters. And then you get five description lines that you can use. So you wanna make sure you're using all of your different description lines as well. And you wanna use ad copy to really sell whatever it is that you're promoting. So in my case, it's gonna be selling people on buying furniture for my website because they can save on furniture. They're gonna get it quickly. There's not gonna be any issues if they want returns. So you wanna really understand your customer and what they're looking for here and make sure you're using selling points. So somebody who might be saying, okay, I don't wanna wait months for furniture, you say fast shipping. You say products available, ready to ship now. You know, for somebody who might think the prices are too high, we have a discount code here and we can also do top rated products at the best prices. So you really wanna focus on some of the different selling points of whatever products or services you're selling now and make sure that people understand that if they go to your website and purchase from your business, they're getting the best possible deal, the best possible product, and there's gonna be no regret in their decision. So we're gonna enter our ad copy here and I'm gonna fast forward through this part a little bit, but what you wanna do is make sure you're using all of your headlines, create your long headline, use all of your description lines as well. Okay, so we have an ad strength of excellent after entering all of our ad copies. So we entered five different headlines here. So really focused on the sale, top rated farmhouse furniture, unique rustic style furniture, and then April 10% off furniture sale. We have our long headline. So best farmhouse furniture, save 10% in April, shipped fast and free. Next, we have our description lines. So we entered five description lines. So all of them really focusing on the sale, fast and free shipping, no hassle returns, making sure people understand they can shop farmhouse furniture for every single room in their house. We have living room, bedroom, patio, and more. So we really wanna use different ad copy to make sure that whatever selling point is working the best at driving conversions on our website, Google Ads will continue to serve that selling point. So we have our responsive display ad here. 
What we can do is create another responsive display ad. So use some different ad copy, use some different images here, so some different assets, and that will only help your performance. The other thing that you can do is just duplicate this responsive display ad if you have multiple landing pages. So and all you need to do is just change your final URL here. Everything else will be exactly the same. And then whichever landing page is driving more conversions. So let's just say I have a page on my website. We're gonna get rid of this here. That is just farmhouse furniture. So we're gonna send people to that website as well where we also have the code that people can use at checkout for 10% off furniture. But let's just say the page is set up completely differently than this one. All we need to do is change our final URL, leave everything else the same, and Google Ads will continue to serve whichever advertisement is driving the best results. Now the other option here for advertisements is to upload display ads. So if we choose to upload display ads here, it's gonna first tell us to enter our final URL. So we have our farmhouse furniture page here as our final URL. They're gonna say ad groups with a responsive display ad have seen a 90% average increase in conversions. You do not need to upload advertisements. They used to be that was the only option you had for Google display ads, but responsive display ads have essentially all but replaced uploaded display ads. Every time I run campaigns, you see way more responsive display ad impressions, conversions, everything. So if we click here for supported sizes and formats, you can see all of the different ad sizes here that you can upload. So to create all these advertisements does take much longer because you need to create each individual size. You definitely, if you are creating your own advertisements and you don't wanna create every single size, I would recommend 300 by 250. I would recommend 336 by 280. If you do a square, you could easily make a 250 by 250 and then just make it slightly smaller and do 200 by 200. For skyscraper, I would recommend using the 160 by 600 and the 300 by 600. I would use all three mobile options here. And then for leaderboard, I would do 728 by 90. 970 by 90 and 970 by 250. If you do all of those sizes, you should get plenty of impressions on your Google display ads. I have actually created a few display ads for this campaign, so I'm gonna upload them now. Okay, so not every size, but we have 320 by 50, 728 by 90, 300 by 600, 300 by 250, and then 300 by 50. And if we just click on one of these sizes, so we'll do our 300 by 600, you could see the way our ad looks, just a bunch of images, 10% off furniture sale, logo, shop now. So you wanna make sure you have a call to action and you wanna make sure that people really understand you know, what they're, what they're clicking your advertisement and what the message on the page is going to be. So you wanna kinda of create a seamless experience as best as possible. So we have our uploaded display ads here, so we can just click on create ad and now if we scroll over here, you can see all of our different advertisements. So we're ready to launch our campaign now. So if we click on next, it's gonna bring us to our campaign review. Okay, so we have our campaign name, our campaign type is display, objective is sales, goal is purchases, we have our final URL set, our campaign settings for locations, languages, and content exclusions, our budget, $33 per day, bidding strategy, target CPA of $3.10, and then in our ad group, we have some of these different audiences that we're targeting, and we have our ads here as well, so we're ready to publish our campaign. Okay, so once we run our, launch our campaign, all we need to do now is run it and let it start getting some activity, some clicks, and see how our overall results look. If you do wanna add additional targeting, all you really need to do is either add it to your existing ad group, or what you could do is take this ad group, and this is what I'll do sometimes, just do edit copy, and then come in here and do edit paste. So that will actually just duplicate our ad group. So it's gonna be the exact same ad group that we're running. So we're just duplicating this ad group with the same exact advertisements we did in the previous step. Okay, so now you can see this is our initial ad group here, ad group one, and then we have ad group one number two. So here's our duplicate. All you need to do is go in your new ad group. You definitely wanna rename your ad groups here. So all you wanna do is go into this ad group and then you can come over here to audience. And all you need to do is click on edit audience segments here, and that is going to bring up some of these different audience targeting options. So you can see the three that we selected in our initial ad group. So we can remove these three audience segments, and then we can just come back here into browse and choose some of these other options here. So if we wanna maybe go to in-market and life events, let's go to life event and let's say someone's purchasing a home. Let's say someone is moving. So when people move and purchase a home, a lot of times they buy new furniture. 
So we'll come back here. We could do detailed demographics and say people who are homeowners or renters, we want to target them as well. So you could play around with some of these different audience segments and see which ones actually work the best for your campaign. So that's one other option you have if you want to expand your targeting a bit. So if you have any questions about any of this, please leave them in the comment section. If we come back over here to all of our campaigns, we can look and see that our Google Display Ads campaign is launched now. Our bid strategy is learning. So for this promotion, we have a discovery campaign and a display campaign running. I could also create my performance max campaign around the promotion as well. So just some different options that you have as you're creating Google Display Ads and some of the other ad types. If you have any questions about Google Display Ads, whether it's targeting, the types of ads there are, please leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching my video today and make sure you subscribe to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel.